I would say, you know, it's always great to be on the winning aspect of it and having some aspects of it where special teams are contributing, you know, in a positive way to help them create a spark, whether it's getting a block to help set up a score or, you know, finishing, game, finishing the half and finishing the game with a field goal. So that was great for our team, great team win, you know, being able to complement each other in all three phases. And it's a big compliment to our players, being resilient, playing all four quarters, playing off each other. And it was great energy on the sideline for those guys. Well, you know, you look at the pictures and you know, biggest thing going in like in game adjustments and being able to have that communication D led with the players from, you know, because special teams is one down mentality. So once one play happens, get an opportunity to, in between offense and defensive plays to be able to talk to our players and have adjustments. You know, we looked at the pictures. Marlon um, did a great job on the play because he does a great job of getting speed off the ball, getting knocked back on the old lineman on field goal, and then being able to set it up, knowing that those guys were top heavy to be able to pop out. So him and TQ uh, as well, they did a good job of, you know, getting them to fire out and Ade, you know, being on the field, you know, first, second, third down, and then finishing that down on fourth down to be able to get, uh, get vertical in that gap to get his hands on the football. So it's a great opportunity for our guys, and it's awesome to see the guys on the sideline and in, in the game, seeing the effort that they're bringing on field goal block and seeing it uh, pay off in a positive way. In Carolina, they, uh, they've been struggling with their punting. Uh, how do you get Avery or OZ ready for, you know, uh, maybe a new punter or, or adjusting for, for the punter that's uh, struggling right now? You know, D-Led, they do have a new punter. They will have a new punter come Sunday, whoever that is. For us, it's all about our details, our fundamentals, you know, urgency to the football, being able to catch whether it's short punts or deep punts, understanding um, his offset, or if he has a certain way he likes to point directionally, whether he's punting left or punting right, what kind of punts that is he like to hit. So we do our homework, you know, whoever it is, they have, they have, they already have video out there. So we go back, look at the film. But it's the biggest thing is making sure, in order for those returners to have a great opportunity to be efficient, effective with the football, we got to first catch the football and get to the football so we can catch it. So those things, we focus more on ourselves, but we are paying attention to his flight direction, his flight, uh, his kick direction, and then his distance and hang time and how it correlates to our return game. How are you you know, Dustin, he started off a little bit slow, but he is getting better. You know, he's getting back in the swing of things. He, haven't punted, he hasn't punted in a while, especially particularly live reps in game. Um, so, you know, his last punt, he finished with a great plus 50 punt to allow our gunners to go downfield and make a play, which was awesome to see. You know, we got, did a good job protecting, getting them down there so we could go make plays. So he's getting better. Um, I love having him in the room. And every day we're looking at from the top of the roster to the bottom roster when we talk about special teams, we're always looking to get better. But he's been a great um, source, a great um, source for our room when it comes to, you know, Josh, it comes with Koo, there's calmness in that room. He's, he's seen it all as a specialist. So it helps when it comes to that special teams room and helps with whether we're talking about field goal, we're talking about punt, punt return. He helps Avery and those guys out when we're talking about punters. So he's been a big impact for our room. Is his leg strength still coming? Because like, you know, the 150 plus punt, the, the first didn't, didn't go well. I think the other two punts were 38. And one of them, you know, was kind of maybe red punt. But like, yeah. is, is that leg strength still there for him? Or is that starting his leg strength is still there, but again, leg strength doesn't mean anything if you don't have the right ball drop when you're dropping the football, if your technique is skewed a little bit. So just cleaning those little things up in game. Last, you know, Jets game, first game punted only two times that game. This game's only punted three times. And getting back in the swing of things, you get better with reps, Mike. So, you know, it's a great opportunity from this week. It continues to get better. Again, this is going to be his third game with us on the field. So I look forward for his opportunity to go out there and help our team win. It's all good. It's good to see you, Kenesha. Start off because it's, I guess we're about a third of the way into the season. He said one of the things he wanted to see was the guys uh, be sure that they were in the proper lanes and closing on the football. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the performance from last week or even taking that third um, of the season as a sample size, how do you feel the special teams unit has grown in those spaces? You know, when we talk about kickoff coverage with the lane discipline, mm -hmm. last week it was better. 
uh, with the limited opportunities that we did have with covering kicks. Uh, just continue to get better. You know, Richie, you know, at the end of half, did a great job winning his one-on-one -on -one battle, getting downfield, being disruptive, and making the play inside the 20. And guys on the backside were doing a better job keeping their, their lane integrity and staying disciplined with their lane so they could be aggressive at the point of attack. And then the, the second one that we covered, same thing. Um, you know, Richie was very disruptive, got down there. Our number one move is speed. You can't replicate or duplicate the type of speed that you want to play with when it comes to the coverage game. So, you know, Richie got downfield and it was disruptive. It wasn't as pretty as we wanted, but he forced the penalty, which forced them to have the ball around the 10 yard line. And that goes with us as a coverage team, being able to control field position by being able to cover kicks, get off blocks and play with, you know, good physical uh, mentality when it comes to that. When we talk about effort, attitude and technique and that all correlates to the coverage game. Mm -hmm. Young way out there in the forest to event to win the game for us, and he was like, "It was like making a call in the second quarter," and, and that's how he felt about it. I mean, in those moments, kind of, do you have a similar kind of feeling where it's like, "Yeah, that we're we're gonna send through out there, and it's gonna be fine." Yes, I mean, I think we talked about that. We spoke about that, like Tori, the New York game when he hit the game winner. That our heart, I mean, for our players, you could kind of look if you look at the sideline. Our guys are calm because. Not only Koo, but the other 10 men on the field, we rep, you know, one, the situation, and two, the technique. We really focus and being, we stay in the present and we focus on our individual techniques. The situation is pretty much irrelevant, and the result will come when it comes to that, whether we're kicking an end of half field goal, we're kicking a field goal in the first quarter, or we're kicking the end of the game. Now, if we're staying in the present, now we can understand, one, we could be great at our technique, and two, understand what they're trying to do within that situation rather than just be like, oh, hope we make the kick. So pretty much our whole team's calm because we, as we get better at reps, and if we stay in the present, then we can focus dial in on that rep, and then the results will come. Yeah. We were talking to Young Way yesterday, and he made the comment about the fact that it's Dustin and Josh who are the guys within that moment who, he was like, I never have to worry about them. He was like, mm -hmm. they've done this for years. I mean, and it's probably two moments of a, uh, of a kick that people overlook. I yeah. mean, what, what can you kind of say about the role that they play in those moments? They do their job at a high level and they really take a lot of pride as it, as all like as to the other you know guys on the field, our O line and our tight ends blocking on field goal protection. But Josh and Dustin particularly, they really take pride every day. If you go out there and you know during warm ups, they're way on the far field working on the spot, working on the snap. They want to make sure that they're doing their job at a high level, so they're therefore a coup could go perform and make the right the uh, correct contact on the football. So. I, those guys that every day they're professionals you know they've seen it all they've been playing for a long time and they take a lot of pride in their job because they want to make sure in order for them to be the best teammate they got to do their job at a high level yeah yeah In those situations right there, going against the punter that we're going against, we knew that he could spray the ball all over the place. Yeah. So our number one goal that week was having urgency to the football, being able to, you know, sprint, get underneath the football, you know, no different than, you know, a Braves outfielder going to play a pop fly. You just have an urgency to go play the football. Yeah. And if you have that urgency to go play football, you could adjust, you have time to adjust on the football. So urgency to the football. And then if that ball takes a bounce, it's not like a, a it's an ob shaped football, so that ball could take any type of bounce. So one, if that ball's taking a, a bounce, we got to make the right decision. We talk about return of decision making. And if that ball doesn't take the right bounce off that first hop, we got to get out the way. And we just got to make sure that our offense has the play the very next down. That's important. That similar situation happened the week before with the, the Dolphins in London versus Jacksonville with Jamal Agnew and the ball took a bounce on him and he wanted to play it. So that's a big part of playing, being a returner for us, whether it's kick return, punt return. You're a quarterback back there. You have to make sure, you have to make the right decisions when it comes to if we're going to return the ball, not return the ball. Are we catching the ball? We're not catching the ball. Because they're dynamic with the ball in their hands, but those guys like Ozzy and Avery, which they've been doing a good job of making the right decisions, we just got to make sure that we learn from that decision. And luckily that did not affect the game when it came to that. We did give them 18 plus yards, the field position, so we can't, we got to clean that up. And those guys in that room, they understand that, and we're excited about this week.
you have a rule to like uh, if you don't catch it, get out of the way automatically? Or oh yeah, get out of the way because that ball. I mean, unless we touch it, the ball's not live, so we got to get out the way. I mean, at the end of the play, we we want to make sure our offense has the ball. Now we want to get our offense ball a great field position, D led. But worst case scenario, we have the ball the next play. We don't want to have any turnovers or give the opponent an extra possession, especially in the NFL when games two thirds of games are decided by one score or less. Um, I, I think it I, – I'm not speaking for everybody else, but I feel like it is universal because you can have a dynamic guy that has the ball in his hands, but if he doesn't make the right decisions, it's hard to put him back there because he's – there's only one football in the field, and that guy's going to be responsible for carrying the football or catching the football, so he can carry the football. So if ball security or decision-making is an issue, then it's hard to justify why that guy should be out there when there's a change of possession, whether the ball's being kicked off the tee or off the punter's foot, there's a change of possession. So we got to make sure we secure the football by making right decisions and putting our offense in the best field position possible, or worst case, we have the football the next play. But that's irrelevant if you can't make those decisions or you know, catch the ball properly or carry the ball properly. You know, just from conversation, just from his history, doing our homework on, on the player, whether it's former coach, former you know players he's been around, the interaction I have with them, and then also within workouts or within practice, being able to um, have you know Tony Dungy talks about this controlled adversity, being able to create some type of adversity and see how they respond to that, because that's a very stressful position, it's a hard position to execute, so being able to try to duplicate or replicate any type of you know, adversity, whether it's within practice, situational things that we do at practice, drill work, um, weather, just like we see the weather today, being able to put them on the spot, see if they have a short-term memory, and, and being able to adjust after a bad kick. And it's all about the process. Some guys, they get fixated, the ball went through the upright, but it wasn't the best contact. So, you know, you can see with Koo, he does a great job being really dialed in on the process. Like, you know, he's not worried about the result because if he handles the process, the results will come and it's shown within his play. I don't know how much experience you've got, not you know, here necessarily, but with the bringing in kickers for trials, what are the punters or place kickers and how odd an experience that is when you're bringing in, I don't know, three or four guys and they're mm-hmm. all doing the same job and they're all kind of on this circuit where they're doing this every two weeks. I mean, are they... It varies based on if they have prior relationships. You know, each situation, that's with any position too. When you bring in, like let's say you bring in three or four wide receivers, so many guys might know each other. So many guys might be like intimidated by another guy because they know his history and his stats, but they vary. You know, it's just like people interaction. It varies based on individuals. You know, sometimes a guy will make a good kick and I'm like, hey, great kick, such and such, or they won't say anything to each other. But at the end of the day, they. I want to see if they're focused on their process and they're focused on their details and their craft and how they're approaching the game. Or how do they act when they miss a kick? Are they blaming the holder? Are they blaming the surface? Or are they taking accountability within themselves? Just switching a little bit out there, but who designs fakes? Is that you? Is, there, is that Arthur? Like who, who designs fakes? When fake field goals are taken? Uh, for, uh, I mean, it's a collective effort. You know, whether it's myself, Coach Smith, you know, Arthur, the players bring up stuff. I mean, it's, it's, it's not limited in our room. We, it's, like we talked about in our meetings, our special teams, our special teams room is very open-ended. We, we talk about a lot of things. And it's not like there's a lot of fakes that have been replicated. So it's not like we're over here trying to reinvent the wheel or like, hey, we come up with a fat, fancy fake. And if there is a fake up that week, there is. But sometimes, you know, fakes might not be there per particular week. Um, but any opportunity we get, whether it's an extended drive, to help our, you know, our offense with better field position. You know, you saw the Rams Detroit game. There was three of them that they executed two fake punts and an onside kick. You know, every special teams coach, every special teams unit throughout the league, they're going to pro- have probably have particular fakes up within the week. And if the looks there, being able to one call it and being able, and then two execute it. 
and then you got to live with with you know the results if you don't execute it hey at least we took a, a tryout it's no different than taking a shot as a you know like what we did on the first play of our two minute drill at the end of the game last week so it's being able to one identify it see if the fake's there and then two being able to execute it I mean, it's, it's limitless. It's whatever you want it to be. It could be you could have no fakes up for a week, or you could have a whole gambit up, just like what the Lions had. It just varies based on the team that you see, the looks that you're getting from that team, and there's a lot of variations down in distance, field position, the situation with the game, lead, not having a lead, you know, after a score, um, tie game. It's all about. You know, at the end of the day, you have all those different variables, but we still have to execute. But to answer your question, it could be from zero one week to five the next week. It's just based on what you're getting from the team, Mike, to answer your question. All right, everyone, anything else? Thank you. All right. Thank you. No problem. Who had the Nissan Ultima? <laughs>